Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in this forum. This has a way. I'm sorry, the audio is quite poor. There is. I'm sorry, but the audio is quite poor. There are my open microphones. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we cannot hear clearly. You have a lot of background noise, Alejandro. There are other voices where you are. And please put this in full screen presentation mode. Ahí está bien. Okay. ¿Ya se escucha mejor? There are other background voices and noises. Sí. Puedes continuar. Okay. You can continue. Thank you. This part of my presentation, particularly regarding the implementation of the DNSs, arose from the need of ensuring. I'm going to speak about the UNAN. There has several domains that are required to respond to the need of the users, speaking about different organizations that are outside the campus in order to implement all these different subdomains at the UNAM. We have two groups of servers. One is authoritative DNSs, and each of these has configured the domain names under the domain name of origin. So this is located at the network of the UNAM, this administration is made by the different types of servers we have. There are thousands of records, and this is traduced into 600 files in the zone that contain records A, quad A, txt, mx, cname. In the different instances of the uname, the most important thing here is that all the DNSs work the Anycast, with the Anycast scheme, and this has been very helpful. So these are the types of servers we have. These servers are located geographically and strategically in four main nodes at the infrastructure of the university in order to provide services to its almost 300 de departments. This is a map that shows each of the nodes where the service is located. Now, let us focus now on why implement the DNS security. 
We know that uh, the domain registers are very sensitive, and if there is any threat, then you can lose service, and especially the uh, service is not going to be adequate. We have also included uh, in the DNS some security uh, techniques uh, that uh, are the most common for IPv4 and IPv6, and we also include uh, the DNS. Uh, the most important, the, the TSIG keys. We must uh, be aware of the integrity of the software and the hardware that is essential to maintain the integrity of the information, and we are interested in having the user received a response of a reliable site to avoid any attacks uh, to the, D, uh, the clients of the DNS for uh, fraud uh, sites, and it's because there are threats as uh, the DNS replacement, uh, the poisoning of caches, and DNS hijacking. So it is absolutely necessary to guarantee the veracity of the responses offered by DNS. And what was uh, the option in, in addition uh, to the uh, DNS? Uh, uh, um, to provide uh, the services uh, for name resolution. Well, DNSSEC reviews the validity of the domain with the, the uh, superior, uh, top levels through exchanging keys called DS that verify that it is a valid domain in Internet so that those that are barely starting may consider this. The validity process is conducted at each uh, top level until you reach the root service, which would, can be verified, uh, especially because we need to see each uh, key that is going to be hosted in the configuration file. At present, uh, ONAM has a basic resolution that has uh, two authoritative DNSs that host 400 zone files, allowing the eight recursive DNS to conduct queries of the domains of U UNAM to disseminate the domains in a university community. In addition to that, in the, among the list of users, we had uh, those uh, um, facilities that integrate to the university, those that are outside the university campus, these are also added to give uh, an adequate service. The DNSSEC protocol is quite important because through digital signatures, it protects the zones that uh, were added to the uh, um, uh, and that are configured in the authoritative DNS. So each of these additions needs to be taken into account when you sign and um, to do it uh, as correctly as possible. So how can we uh, complete that uh, process of sig signing the zones? First of all, we need to, s to know how many domains we are going to sign, how many zone register we're going to sign. And this is very useful, especially when we start to clean the domains that have not been updated. I think that most of us, when we are requested uh, uh, some uh, files for some projects for a temporary event, and they have not been updated, we do not see that if that event uh, uh, was already completed and then it is hosted in the DNS and it continues to act. That is very common. So this r review of the zone will help us clean those that are no longer active. So we generate the signatures one public and uh, with a public and a private key, and uh, we do it manually, and we generate that couple of keys. The keys are added to the zone file, as we can see here in the picture, to do uh, to sign the zones. This is how we. Uh, create those keys for a, a domain. In the case of FSA, that is the accounting of an organization, well, 
we create this file. Um, so when signing, if there's an alternate uh, for the uh, assignment, but uh, uh, when we sign, it shows the file that uh, has already been signed correctly with DNSSEC. After starting uh, the process, we start to check that the propagation is adequate. We have tools in to see that indeed the propagation is taking place adequately, but we can also use other alternatives, including some tools in the internet, and that will help us a lot to see uh, how the change is reflected. So these are very basic tools, but and we can see adequately how the signing takes place and how this is propagated regionally. S something that is very important that needs to be borne in mind is generating a, a chain of trust. As a university, uh, a regional university in Mexico, we started with this uh, signing and uh, we build a chain of trust, especially when we start propagating each of these registries uh, regionally. So it is something that is important and that we need to consider. So when we start to check each of these registries, it's not, it doesn't suffice just with having the key. Um, you need to see that it propagates properly. It is what sometimes happens that when the domain as such is not propagated, you're not solving the uh, correctly. Each of our registries need to be valid, and the tools will help us a lot to see that indeed the propagation is taking place adequately. So when we generate this uh, chain of trust, in the DSS uh, file where we generate in this chain, we can obtain the data and we can add uh, the data, uh, its configuration. So it is very important to keep an adequate control of all those registries. The zone files in this case uh, we have about 400 uh, zone files and the other ones that have added, been added uh, little by little to each of the zone files. Here you have a glimpse of uh, how we activate the chain of trust. In this case with uh, Nick Mexico, I know it's a very simple way, so much so that propagation is not reflected uh, right away. It takes about 24 to 48 hours. However, we need to bear in mind that when we open this, uh, when we start this chain of trust, we need to be pe uh, attentive. If we do it, for instance, uh, during the week, we know that the users may be working and especially when at uh, peak hours, when there are many users connected. Maybe it, it might be better to do it in a, on a weekend or a, a holiday, and we need to check how propagation is taking place or if anything went wrong and to be able to correct it right away. Generating the trust uh, chain. So for this case, uh, for this, it's necessary to share the contents of the DSS uh, uh, file. We created a file where we can we add the content in uh, the main zone. If we don't do that, if we don't 
split that uh, Merdias uh, chain, there will be no resolution. And the domain that we uh, try to solve in this zone, we won't succeed. It is important to point out that each of these registries must have their DS uh, registry so that it may propagate correctly. A while ago, we saw the example of uh, uh, the of these domains, and we added to the rest of the subdomains. In this case, it would be dot mx. We see the D the NSS. Uh, we add uh, the NS registries of the subdomain in the zone file of the parent domain, and we have to add it in uh, the main file too. That's very important. Here we see the example. The chain of this pseudo-domain specifically, here we have it in red, and this is what we will put in the main file. We check that uh, the creation of uh, the chain of uh, trust uh, is uh, propagated, and we must see whether there are there any details. This is, it's very important to see that the propagation takes place because there we can note when the uh, propagation is done adequately. We should not wait for user alerts, uh, especially when we are signing. Well, here you see the creation of uh, the chain of trust of the domain DNS uh, oh, of FCAUNAMA.MX. Now, some considerations. This has to do with uh, the SECA. We establish parameters for renewal of um, we, we, we need to consider at what intervals we are going to start the signing again. So we proposed a specific date to be able to start a renewal so that we can do it uh, more automatically. Initially, we started to do it manually, but uh, with the generation of tools uh, and with more automa automated systems. The renewal t typically takes place from between one and four months with uh, the uh, NSK keys and that uh, is done every one or two years. But uh, this may vary depending on the number of zones that you have to sign and the time needed to generate such signs. So, so um, it is better not to change uh, the NSK key, so um, you, it's preferable not to change it recurrently, and it is important to generate a number of policies. The, uh, here at NIC, we are developing policies to be considered when you need to take this part of the administration that has to do with the DNSs. So, what happens is that when all the information or everything you are creating is, uh, is in the hands of one person, you have to check that uh, the information is shared. So that is one of the important things that the staff should be aware of. The staff needs to know how the signing is done, uh, because if they don't know how to do it, then the domains will no longer work. So in general terms, we have worked with this uh, part with the signing. I know that this is a first step and little by little we'll see how this is done in a more automated manner. So this opens up a path that we have to follow. We are now starting to work with this Option, but this has served a lot to 
see the relevance of this kind of signing and to uh, add these security layers to the different types of service. And are there any questions? Muchas gracias, Alejandro. Thank you, Alejandro. Are there any questions? Yo tengo una. Okay. I have a question. Yes. I'm Hugo Salgado. I understood from your presentation that you um, manage all the domains at the university. I'd like to know whether there are some who prefer to wish uh, to manage their own zones and then to coordinate with you the passing of the DS that has to be coordinated. Do you have experiences that you can share with us or is everything centralized where you are? Yes, we manage the main domain ourselves. We generate that DS key and we also apply this. There is no third party that does this, if that was your question. Yes, that was my question. Well, yes, there are other organizations. And I'm thinking, for example, a university like the one where I work and the School of Engineering wants to have its, only, its own signing option. The School of Arts doesn't care about that too much. So that was my question. Maybe that would require some further coordination. Yes, I understand your question. Yes, we centralize the management of the domains we assign as well as the signing. Thank you. We have a remote question from Henry Godoy. I think this is a similar question to the one that Hugo was asking. As a major university, and that the UNAM has many subdomains. How do you coordinate the signing of the zones? Are these the responsibility of a centralized IT body, or you, do you depend on an expert from one of the other schools of the university, or did you have to train the team that is involved with this? Could you clarify that to Henry Godoy? Thank you for your question. As an initial point, the information center of the network is in charge of the managing the unam.mx domain. We don't have third parties or any technical team to carry out this centralization process. At the information center of the UNAM, there are two of us who are in charge of managing the records. And we don't uh, uh, use other options. We notify them that the register is going to be signed. We therefore just notify them that an additional security layer has been added to their domains. For example, engineering.unam.com. MX, we told them that a further security layer was added to their subdomain. So it is quite complex initially to carry out that type of signing, particularly when we're working manually. But only in this way did we realize how important this was. Thank you. So thank you very much. We now invite you to have lunch. Um, sorry, sorry, yes, another applause, round of applause. So thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, and enjoy your lunch. So we resume at 2 p.m. for the second block of today's forum. <laughs>